so people always ask me, how do I travel for matches? And I've done some videos in the past, but you know, it's an evolving process. Um, I think every time you travel, you kind of learn something, things you don't need, things you could take. Well, this is all I'm here for. I'm here, obviously I'll be shooting tomorrow, Saturday. So I'll be shooting a total of uh, eight, nine days. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, like eight or nine days. Anyway, um, 660 something rounds of ammo, two guns, and this is it. I've got my two rifle cases right here, and I've got a suitcase, and I've got a backpack, and that's it. So let's take a look at how I make this happen. And with some back breaking work. All right, so first we have the suitcase. And I think the suitcase is really the most important thing. Now, I happen to buy a square one uh, because I actually rest my rifles on top and I can wheel the whole thing. And that works well for me. But here we go. So this is everything that's in my case. So I've got, this is my target pulling rope. Okay. I have my front handbag. Uh, so I, I rest my hand on this when I'm using my joystick. I have my rear bag in here. And some of this stuff, you know, like you can expect it to get a little deformed. So, you know, you're gonna sit there and kind of play with it a little bit. Uh, we have some clothes, which is to be expected. And I pack very light. We're in a house, I get Airbnbs all the time. Uh, I bring a very minimal amount of clothes. So I'm here for, I flew in Friday, I'm flying out a week from Monday. I literally have like three days worth of clothes. Uh, my plan, I just do a lot of wash. It's not a big deal, but it does allow me to reduce uh, what I bring. So I've got some clothes and we'll be periodically finding clothes packed away in here. Um, there's the head to my mini, or at least part of the head. We have some more clothes. Uh, we'll get to these in a second. And then we've got more clothes. You know, I've got my shooting pants. I've got shooting shirts, um, flip flops for around the house, all that kinds of fun stuff. So that's everything from this main section. And then if we go through here, um, I don't really put anything in these zippers because it, you know, it gets in the way when you're folding it over. But if we're on this side, we have a few more clothes. We happen to have a pool and jacuzzi at this house, so we're good there. My other sandal. I've got my shooting hat. This is my mat. So this is my travel mat. It folds up really small, but it's eight feet long. It's 26 inches wide. It does what I need for matches and again, very portable. I have a portable cooler, so this is a fold-up igloo. So I can unfold this. What I do is I freeze water bottles as my ice, that way I don't have a lot of mess. But this is big enough to hold three or four water bottles, a Gatorade, some apples, and a um, Lunchable, and that's all I need it to do. So that travels with me, and that's easy to use. And more clothes, another pair of shooting pants. Um, and so that's it, that's the entirety of my clothing right there. <laughs> Um, then we have my toolkit. So this is my, uh, my Borka, my full Borka kit here that comes with me. This is one of the few things that I will not travel without you. There's a lot of things that you can borrow, you know, beg, borrow and steal from people on, on the line. Um, I don't like leaving my toolkit up to chance. Um, I know exactly what tools in here I need. This is my entire cleaning kit. So in here, I've got my patches and then underneath you can see, I've got bottles with, um, carbon and uh, copper cleaner, oil, lube, everything there, brushes. Brushes are over here on this side in a little baggie. This is uh, airtight, uh, so it travels real well. I think a good note is that that's also a waterproof case. It is a waterproof case, so if something <clears throat> does leak, it ain't getting out. And the, the way I look at it, so it's kind of twofold, right? I use all the patches to stuff it, and my theory is I'm gonna soak the patches anyway, so if something leaks onto a patch, so what? I'm gonna push it through a barrel anyway. <laughs> Um, I mean, it gets, it can get a little messy once in a while, but I've, I've never had it leak more than like maybe a quarter size drop. Uh, this is my timer at big matches. Having a timer is really critical. Um, you know, we do play the time game once in a while. We get half an hour to shoot each relay. There are times where you need to sit on your gun for five, 10, 15 minutes. Knowing the time is very critical there. Uh, oh yeah, that's an extra tuner. Uh, this is my wind cover. So this, this is a very small, lightweight item, but um, there are many times where we shoot, and this just opens up, it can protect from rain, it can protect from um, wind, uh, sand, dirt, grit, stuff like that. There are a lot of times where you might be on a back-to-back -back relay, so you're leaving your gun on the line. 
And, um, you know, you don't want stuff getting on it. You might not be using it to score or whatever. Um, I like having some kind of cover, especially when it's windy. It keeps stuff out of your action and out of your um, barrel. Uh, then I have the base for my mini, so that folds down. And it's just real nice and flat. Do I have to reassemble some of this stuff? Absolutely. Like, I'm going to be spending, you know, probably an hour tonight putting all the feet back in, putting the head together, all of that. But it's, it's the, you know, it's the consideration I'm willing to do. I have, these are 3D printed. So these are actually from the guy that does the barrel cooler, um, barrelcool.com. Um, I bought these and they are 3D printed uh, F-Class feet. So super light, uh, F-Class feet can get really heavy. And so far I've had really good luck with these. Uh, what else do we have in here? I have my bore scope. So this is my test long. And what I do is, is my test long kind of is convertible because um, I have my screen from my, my actual hard rod uh, bore scope, but then I also have a flexible version. So I just detach the cable and the screen, throw it in here with the, the soft cable, and then I can bring it along with me. So we've got that. Then we have a bag that has all of my mini accoutrements. So this is going to have, you know, the Mariner wheel and, you know, the side rests and everything else that's in there. So again, that'll be a project for tonight, reassembling. Uh, I have my air duster and things like this. You might say, well, they're kind of big and stuff. Yeah, but they're really light. And so for me, this is this is something that if I can fit it in, this, is, this goes in the maybe pile. If I have room, I can squish it in somewhere. It's really light, um, but it does have a huge benefit, especially in heavy sandy areas like we're shooting at Ben Avery tomorrow uh, for the whole week, actually. Um, you know, there's, there's times where you might just want to kind of, you know, blow off your lens, blow off whatever. You can't travel with compressed air really easily, so I love having that. And then this is my range bag. So uh, I just travel with this really crappy Ryobi. I think it's Ryobi, yeah. This is just a, a really just cheap Ryobi bag, but it, it folds down to nothing, but it provides a ton of space, and it just lets me, you know, haul everything to the line really easily. And then I just pack a very light, these are plastic clips, you know, every couple years they've broken on me. I just get a new one. It's not a big deal, but everything's about weight saving. So do, could I buy metal clipped ones? Absolutely. But, you know, two ounces here, two ounces there. Suddenly you're adding a pound or two pounds. Um, to me, it makes a difference. And honestly, these things last much longer than you'd expect. Um, so that's my range bag. And then finally in here, uh, these are two of my cleaning components. Uh, this one I don't use as much. I could wad up a couple of uh, patches for cleaning out the action but really I find that having uh, this wool mop and and my action rod here works the best and so what I do because this is flexible I can throw it in the range bag I don't have to worry about it getting bent or anything like that I always have it on the line I always have my wool mop with me and if I need to clean something out whether it's sand or whatever else I can do that and then when I get home to clean I also use it to clean out the action and I've got a Bortec wiper that goes in and gets the lugs clean and um, so I love having this lightweight, again, it's all about weight. Uh, I go and it's just a very lightweight plastic. Um, it's got a metal thread um, for, the, for the insert, but otherwise it's just plastic and it works great for me. So that is everything that is in my suitcase. And you can see I make really good use of the space that's in there. Um, one, other, one other side note is, and I just started doing this, but I air tag all of my cases now. Um, it's cheap. Uh, it's like a hundred bucks to buy four of them and there's one in my backpack, one in my suitcase and both in my guns. It's just um, cheap insurance if something got lost or left in an airport. Um, at least I know where it is. So that is that is my suitcase. So very efficient. Now let's go to the rifle kit. Or wait, I'll go to my backpack here. So this is the backpack. Now the backpack is the only thing I carry on the airplane with me. Um, I like to travel, again, as light and, and easy as possible. Oftentimes, I'm by myself. This particular trip, I was able to fly uh, the longest leg with one of my buddies. Um, so that was nice. But, you know, a lot of times you're traveling by yourself. It's, I, I really try to minimize what I have to carry, you know, behind security. Because if you have to go to the bathroom or get food or do whatever, um, it sucks when you've got a backpack and a big roller bag or things like that. So if I can get it down to this, that's where I'm happy. So... Let's start on the outside. I have this water bottle holder that is great for matches, but then also doubles for, um, I have a little therapy ball, which sometimes just a stress ball helps. Um, that's in there. And then 
I have this little tool holder. This is from Home Depot. And I just have it taped shut because I have a little bit more in here than normal. In fact, going through security, they bomb tested this because, well, they, they don't like things that look homemade. <laughs> and so I had, you know, painter's tape wrapped around it and it was metal and tubular. And um, yeah, so they, they pulled it aside and no big deal. But um, I do keep, this is part of my rain gear. So this goes over my eyepiece and it just helps keep the rain off if it's drizzling. I have my Kestrel stuffed inside here. And then these are my sunshades and a couple batteries for my scope. Uh, but these are just sunshades for uh, both of my scopes. And uh, because of the length of my backpack and some other factors, I don't like leaving the sunshades on. So that's why I just pack these away. And again, it gives me a good opportunity to put some other items um, in here that I normally wouldn't otherwise. Uh, if we go into the middle section here, this is mostly my uh, like toiletries and stuff. Um, so no big deal here. There's just some medicines and whatnot, but uh, a couple of key things. Obviously I've got my good earplugs that come with me and then you can't forget the beauty of the um, Andy scan chronograph. And uh, I know I haven't done an update video on this yet. I, I have one that's in process, but I can't understate how nice it is to just throw this into a backpack and have it here in Arizona so that I can, um, you know, do when I'm doing some testing tomorrow, um, you know, I'll be able to at least look at my data. Um, nothing else in here is really applicable in this pocket. It's just, it's all of my, you know, deodorant and toiletries and stuff. Um, I have a couple upper pockets here. It's just normal traveling stuff, my different cords and charging stuff, but let's look at the inside because that's what matters. And I think this is where a lot of people get surprised when they consider like, how do I travel? How do I fly with stuff? So um, I'm, I'm sort of a, I used to be a serious boy scout when it came to packing stuff. Like I would overpack and I've really pared stuff down, but I go for lightweight packable jackets. So, you know, this is a jacket that, you know, just fits into nothing, but it's, it's you know, if we get a cold morning, it's great to have. So that's in here. I have a rain jacket thrown in here. It's just a 32 below, very lightweight. Again, um, we are expecting potentially a couple days of some drizzle or something. Uh, I do have a pair of shorts stuffed in here because my wife said, you should take another pair of shorts. So I took another pair of shorts. Um, I do have a proper toiletry bag here with my toothbrush and stuff in it. And then um, this is my rain bag. And I normally wouldn't consider bringing it. Um, so I have two rain sets. This is like my lightweight travel. And then I have a full size one if I'm driving somewhere. But this is going to have, you know, my, um, my rain guards that go on the scope. I've got plastic covers and some bungee cords to hold stuff down, but it's all packed away again in just this really nice zipper pouch. So I can throw it in my range bag and it's all isolated. I have a very lightweight um, tripod and this is what holds my chronograph. So it just sits right here. But again, it's, it's very lightweight, barely takes up any space or room. And then I have both of my scopes. So my scopes are in a neoprene cover here. I do wrap them up really tight just so they're well protected. But you can see, um, you know, there's there's scope number one, and then I've got my obviously I've got covers on to help protect it, and then I've got my scope number two right here. And in case you're wondering, yes, I have absolute perfect luck resetting those on my on my rifles. A lot of guys do this. Uh, I will tell you, I can't speak for everybody, but I know at least half a dozen of the top 20 shooters pull their scopes, travel, put them back on zero issues um a lot of that comes down to having like like i showed you earlier good torque wrench um good procedures you know good testing but i have i have absolute faith pulling scopes putting them back on i've done it multiple times at the range i've tested it i have no issue with it uh then i have my spotting scope in here so that is my full spotting scope with my head and um and then we'll get to the rest of it here in a second so I've got a computer in here too, you know, like these are 511 bags, which I absolutely love. They've got this nice outside uh, pocket for computers. So I've got that, uh, but that's everything that was in my suitcase now and in my backpack. So let's get to the rifle cases and I'm gonna need the keys here. So somehow I lost one of my good locks and I need to replace it. So I had to replace it with one of these. Plus if I 
the spell. One thing about traveling with rifle cases, know the laws, know what it's going to take at the airport. Um, it takes time. Every airport that I've been to is pretty much different. Um, some will evaluate your guns like outside of screening. Some will wait till you're inside screening. Um, like when I fly out of Tennessee, they take the guns, but then usually 10 minutes before I'm about to board, they'll ask for my keys. They run with the keys, then they come back. Um, when I go to PDX, I drop the guns off. I never hear from anybody again. At Sky Harbor, there's an actual TSA room that they escort you to. They inspect the guns, lock them up, and take them. So just know what you're in for. Make sure you read the rules. And make sure you label your cases. I've got painter's tape over it, but this is my name and phone number in three different places. And I do that on all my cases because TSA does need to get a hold of you sometimes. Or if this ended up somewhere else, somebody needs to get a hold of you. And a really good reason why I do that, when these came off the plane today, my heavy duty luggage tag had been completely ripped off. So if I don't have my name written on here, then we'd be in trouble. All right, so inside uh, the gun cases. Now this is, this is the one thing that, that does vary, sort of depending on what my needs are. Um, firearm decoration. Uh, so here is, we're just gonna kind of start pulling stuff out here. This is my tripod that I use for my spotting scope. So that's it. I don't bring anything big or bulky. That's all I need. Uh, I've got my handle for the, my joystick for the um, Seb. This is an extension for, uh, this is an extension for, oh, well, these are locked down, but this, this goes on here. And then this is gonna go on here and it just gives me a little bit of an extension for my spotting scope to get it in front of my eyeball. I have a pull through, this is called a patchworm, but it's a pull through raw uh, line that you actually use real patches on. So I have one thing of little Tupperware that's full of just plain patches. And then these are soaked with alcohol. I use these on the firing line because I don't like having cleaning supplies on the firing line. But if I need to run something through my barrel for any reason, I can suck an alcohol patch through, it evaporates, and then I can run a dry patch through. So these stay in my range bag the whole time. Um, I also happen to have, oh, we never covered the ammo in the other ones. We'll go back to that. But um, I happen to have 80 rounds of ammo in here. Yes, you can have ammo and guns together uh, in this capacity, as long as the ammo is in an official package and your gun uh, is not loaded in any way. And then my rifle case, just like this. I've got my Mirage bands here. Uh, my bolt is right here. It's in a heavy neoprene case, so it's safe. And then we're gonna undo this Velcro. If I can find the end of it. Where'd you go? There it is. Okay, so there's that. And this is just my rifle inside. And you can see this lets me bring my full-size rifle case with me, which is really important for me. And then I've got uh, rifle number one in here. And we'll mount the scopes up on that. And let's go to case number two. Both of these cases weigh in right about 47 pounds. So that way I don't pay any overage fees. Even though some airlines don't charge extra for sporting goods when they're overweight, um, I still don't like uh, being overweight if I don't have to. Gun number two, it's got my pocket knife because I like traveling with that. This is my cleaning boot, so it goes over the stock for cleaning. I've got my rear donut bag, wouldn't travel without that. And then we'll get to that in a second here. I've got my other bolt there. I've got uh, my bore guide. I've got another 60 rounds of ammo in here. This is a big match, there's a lot of ammo. Not every match requires this much ammunition. Um, I've got my full-size cleaning rod in here and then this particular rifle case is the same so there's just gonna be another gun inside of it. The only difference is that on this particular one I do stuff I have this PMA cleaning cradle which I absolutely swear by and we'll assemble that but you know it's basically these are the uprights so that's gonna screw together across this rod 
So these go in here. These are the cross beams, and it's, it's just really, really nice. Um, they're incredibly stable. You can apply a ton of pressure for cleaning. They're lightweight, and they're just, I think they're the best cleaning cradle out there. So um, it's just from PMA Tool. But again, this is just gun number two. So my two guns have names. This is this is bold. The other one's pastel. And that mainly has to do with the fact that this trigger guard is like a really bold color. And the rings, the scope is this one. So if you've seen some of my other testing where I've labeled stuff, a lot of times in the shot marker you'll see bold or pastel. But like, see these colors? It's really deep and and bold and then this set of colors on these rings are more of like a pastel and my trigger guard is kind of a pastel blue so anyway bold and pastel so the last thing i'll show you here make some room is the big ammo boxes so these are the click it clams i've shown them before they hold 20 rounds these happen to be for the magnums so they're a little bit larger um, they do take up a little more space because of the magnum. So I had to find myself a new case. And this is what that looks like. So right there, that is 13 click it clams, 260 rounds. And they just fit like, I mean, they are just perfectly tight in here. They're protected inside my suitcase. So you're not, you're not getting ammo getting thrown around everywhere. And what's nice about this is I can... Like, I'll go through tonight, or probably tomorrow, and I'll organize all my ammo, because I've got it sorted into different batches. But it lets me bring, like, I can just throw this in the truck and feel really good about having all my ammo in one place. And I just operate out of these. I don't bring in, um, obviously I didn't have any space left, but I, uh, I just operate out of these. I don't bring another ammo box of any kind. So what I do when I get on the line is I just pull all my bullets, and then they just sit on top, you know, like this. It's not a big deal and I've never had a problem with it. In fact, sometimes it actually is a little more convenient than having like a, a thick MTM box or something. So I just work out of these. I'll have 20 rounds up kind of like towards the front where I shoot. And then I usually put another box to my left, which are the ciders. So they're kind of out of the way. The ciders, you know, I may not shoot as fast. I don't really care that they're right there kind of next to my action. So I'll put the ciders off to the left. My record rounds are up front and that's all I do with it. So. That's me traveling for nationals. Um, you know, it's a, uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, you know, it's a full day playing Tetris, patching everything in, figuring it out. Um, and it takes time. I would say if, if you watch any videos I did a couple of years ago, I probably had at least one more full size bag, bigger rifle cases. Everything was heavier. Everything was bigger. Um, this is an absolute dream to travel with when you're shooting a match of this level. So, Anyway, I hope this helps you guys out, answer some questions. You guys have a good one. We'll talk later.